We're recording. There we are. Bonjour. All right, mate, give me a number. We've got one, three, six, ten, or eleven. Number one. Ooh, top of the shop. Oh, it's. Oh. Oh. It's got an exciting name. It's a no brainer, Jeff. No brainer. So that could mean one of two things. It's obviously a very easy, simple decision, or it's got absolutely not knock my socks off. Hard. Sure. It says dry, cloudy, and sparkling hard cider. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Cloudy Ooh. and sparkling, eh? How can how can it be? How can it be? Let's give it a go. From the Cotswold Cider Company. Strong. Doesn't well, well, it tastes doesn't smell that strong. Nice noise. Can you, can you, hear, can you hear it? Yeah. Blip, 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 blip. The fizz. You can hear the fizz. Hear the sparkle. 4.8%. Oh. Be light and refreshing then. Well, it's nice, that is. Yeah. Different kind of taste, a bit more, a bit more apples in that one <laughs> than normal. <laughs> uh, but, in, but in a nice way, it's, it's quite, it's very fizzy. But I wouldn't, say, yeah, I suppose it's a bit cloudy, isn't it? It's nice though. It's got a bit of a floral, floral taste to it as well. Yeah. Apples and flowers. What about you? What you got? Well, I've got uh, an interesting looking thing. Look at this. I've, I've gone for the packaging. Oh, you've been sucked in by the cartoon strip packaging. Yeah, it's a, it's a Amundsen Brewery. I've heard of it. An everyday hero. It's a New World IPA. I'm not quite sure what New World IPA means. Um, but it, it, Looking at the ingredients, it, and from Amundsen, I, I associate with Norway. So Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's Norwegian. Uh, Norwegian beer, and it's very colourful. Sort of colourful can. Sort of looks apoc apocalyptic almost. Mm, well, very apt. Eyeballs and things. Not very apt. But How's the taste? Smooth, light. Yeah, smooth. Very um, almost lagery. In a way, the hops are quite subtle. Yeah. Um, yeah, pleasant. It's got a slight, a slight tang to it. No, not particularly fruity or anything. Quite simple. Four point seven percent. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Very good. Oh, cheers. Cheers, chap. Another one. Another remote event. Yeah. What are we in? What are we now? Week what? Eight? Seven? Week, week many of, of many, I think. Yeah, I've, I've lost track. Yeah. But, uh, you had a good day? Yeah, fairly, fairly productive day, I think, today. Been trying to, uh, we did a bit of work on our advanced class today, didn't we? We've trying to nail that into more of an online, using Miro, bit of Miro work today, didn't we? Mm-hmm. So that was good. I say us, mostly you. Because <laughs> you're better uh, at those than me. You were, do, you were watching well, weren't you? You were watching. Um, but um, no, I did, I did a, tried to um, engineer a couple of other course offerings I'm, I'm thinking about offering at the moment. So a couple of emails to the old Scrum Alliance about those. A couple okay. of um, ideas. Again, I've gone back into kind of ideas mode. Either it's Almost when I was back to when I was writing my book, that kind of can't sleep. I know a lot of people's sleep has probably been affected by anxiety and, and a lot of the stuff that's going on. But that's um, generally when a lot of my ideas come to me is that kind of slumber time just when I'm trying to get to sleep and a few sleepless nights in the last week or so when I've just literally had to come downstairs, grab some post-its and write stuff down. So trying to put some of those things into motion. Um, I've always got a pack of post-its by the bed. You keep them by the bed, do you? Mm. Yeah, I should I should should have done that. Really, I had to venture downstairs in the dark. I don't want to wait for that. Yeah. 
I oh, just realised we should uh, we should say a toast. We should. A toast to our newest patron. And who is that? Andreas. Andreas and- Fiddler. Andreas, yes. Great guy from Germany. Good scrum master. Uh, he's joined us at the Social Distance Inn as well. Yes, he did, didn't he? He had some fun with his webcam, didn't he? He was yes. trying all sorts of different masks on with his uh, webcam. Filters, I think they call them, don't they? Yeah. That's a bit like one. Snapchat filters, but for, for Zoom. My favourite one was his... Uh, he, 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 don- he began to look like Donald Trump. It was kind of a Donald Trump kind of... <laughs> Face morph, wasn't it? Then he, then he was into Joe Exotic, wasn't he, from Tiger King? Yeah, there's was some good stuff on there. It, made, it certainly uh, made us all chuckle when, it, when we were watching that. So so cheers, yeah, cheers, Andres. Andres. Nice to, yeah, thank you very much for the, for the drink. Yeah. And, um, okay, so yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. you. You're talking about different course offerings and things. We had um, somebody else tweeted us recently. Okay. Pavithra. Okay. Abby, I think, to, to her friends. <laughs> she said um, she'd be interested in learning more about remote sprint meetings. Okay. You're probably not the only one. No, it's true. It's probably um, people having to quickly adapt, aren't they, to to remote formats of, of various scrum meetings. Mm. And you've been doing quite a bit of that recently. Well, I've I've done... I've been focusing more on the retrospective element of it. Um, Always been your favourite, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, um, I offered my, as you know, I offered my services to any team really that wanted a neutral. We've always talked about the, the advantages of having a neutral facilitator. Mm. So I took this. I thought, kind of thought, well, maybe people might want to some help because I, I can virtually travel anywhere virtually who, now. Who, who wouldn't want you facilitating <laughs> a retrospective? Well, exactly. I uh, and I can uh, turn up on anyone's Zoom call and, and facilitate for them. Zoom but, So, um, so I've been doing a bit of that, and that was quite fun. And um, a lot of the, again, I've been using Miro for that as well. So, but a lot of the tools that I've been in retros format, and I've done some little on short little online retros as well. Remote retros um, are probably harder because you've got to get people talking more, and it's when you've got um zoom or you've got a um teams or whatever you're using you'll find well i've certainly found it's harder sometimes to get everyone's voice in the room like 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 you would be perhaps more easily if you're doing it face to face or in the same meeting room so literally just leveler though isn't it it's a good leveler when everybody's remote yeah true but it's not perhaps it's not as natural i wouldn't say it's as natural no no, but when it comes to something that's a word that I hear you use quite a lot, status. Yeah. People in the room, when you've got people who are remote and some people in the room, I think naturally the status of the people in the room without talking about it is generally higher. Yes. And so it's true. a little bit too easy if you're facilitating to be swayed. By and I was... I was very guilty of this, and I can remember calls that we were on together, probably uh, certainly at BT or or similar instances, when I would forget, literally forget about the person who was hanging on the end of a phone. Mm. It's probably harder if you can see them visually, if you've got the cameras on or if you've got um, webcams. But well, before that, we used to before that we used I, I used to actually get the team, the people who were in the room, to draw pictures of the people who were on the phone, yeah, and stick them on the chair. Yeah, so that they could see who wasn't there. Yeah, and, and you know, and you know, then if if someone is being quiet, you 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 can your eyes are scanning around the room, and you realise somebody hasn't spoken that could mm. be. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. And trying to as much as you can, you've got to respect people's privacy, but um, staying visual, um, seeing people's faces. Playing around, giving people... So another interesting thing I tried in retrospectives as well is that, again, making use of the features is the rename tool. So um, you can obviously, on Zoom, you can rename yourself to anything you want to be on a on, a, on your Zoom window. So to try and introduce that element of safety, um, trying to introduce um, your name as an emotion you're, you're, you're feeling right now, so I might rename instead of just being Paul Goddard, I might be um, 
what might I be? Beginning with P. <laughs> Patient Paul, or I might be um, provocative Paul. I don't know, something like that. So something that might be summarizing my emotion or my kind of state right now. And just just playing around with that that Zoom feature as well, just to give a bit of a game to to get people's mood in the room. Mm. That was quite a nice thing to do. Um, but yeah, you can you can use these feature these Zoom features or these um, uh, collaborative tool features to to your advantage and make it a lot more colourful. And, and, and Miro that I've been using, as well as Jamboard, is a very colourful way to to see your data, see the data. Well, uh I've seen um, advantages, more advantages of everyone being remote. Mm. Quite often, if you're in the room, then you've got one person who's driving, you know, the, yeah. the Jira driver. Yeah. Um, and it's such a painful thing. You know, I'm thinking of planning, for example, uh, and you're going through the stories and someone's at the machine or someone's logged in to the yeah. machine. But here everybody's logged in and they can all be annotating on the same thing or they can be going into different breakout rooms if you're in planning sessions, for example, and you know, doing a bit of backlog refinement in a, in a, in a small breakout room and then automatically yeah. redistributing people into different pairs or different triads. Yeah. Um, I think that that's a, a, an advantage of everybody being on the same page Yeah. And with the same tools, providing, of course, everybody has the same technology the same access and uh, something we talked about in a recent episode does everybody have the same you know internet access for example and the mm. same machine as some people are having to use their their data allowance on their phones and and so on um but that's something i learned in the uk is the responsibility of the employer mm, yeah you want your employees to work from home you, the employer is re- is uh, obliged to provide the necessary equipment yeah. Does so any other anything else about remote meetings? So think, let's think about what we're planning. We've got stand ups. You can make stand ups a bit more interesting as well. Um, so the one that we've always done, uh, just playing games on stand ups, like um, you can play tag quite easily on stand ups to try and obviously you if you if you've been in a stand up situation where you've stood in a circle you'd probably just wait until the next person in the talks per um, circle talks before you start but you can play that a bit more virtually um uh, by playing some kind of random tag uh, over zoom calls um and things like that trying to change it up a bit i saw some other i think it was actually on the miro website they they came up with like 10 different games or icebreaker type games that you can play um and one of them, that the one that stuck in my mind was um, the quickest person to lie on their desk. Lie on their desk. Yeah. So, you, <laughs> so you have to literally try and rearrange. I don't think I could do it here without causing a massive catastrophe. But yeah. um, trying, trying, able to see if you're able to lie on your desk as quickly as possible. That rewards the person with the clear desk policy, right? Yes. Yeah, so maybe that's it. Maybe that's the uh, the the the, uh, the benefit there. Yeah, I don't tend to clear my desk every day. It, it gets to the point where I think, right, seriously now, I need, <laughs> I need to have a big clear. And to be honest, it only takes me about five minutes to do it, yeah. even when it said it's worst. Yeah. So why I don't do it every day, I don't know. Yeah. But I'm looking at it now and thinking, yeah, I think tomorrow might be the day. <laughs> <laughs> Not today, though. <laughs> Yeah, you well, luckily today what you can put off till tomorrow. Luckily, uh, for the benefit of the people that are maybe watching this on Patreon, can see the 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 camera view of, of of Jeff and I talking. But what they can't see is the the kind of the the cone of of of, of the area that you can't see behind my screen or to the side of my monitor, which is literally just a carnage. There's stuff everywhere, but everything behind me looks very tidy. That's the main thing on Zoom calls. Mm. But you um. Yeah, exactly. So I was wondering, this might not go anywhere. Might not, yeah. This might die on its ass. Go on then. But it's a half thought. When you were talking about remote meetings, and I know we've talked already about Zoom fatigue and it's a thing, and people are yeah, understandably just so tired and drained and fed up of being on video call yeah. all day, every day. Um, and it's well documented that it's much more draining than being in physical meetings. Yeah. <sighs> Whether maybe maybe we need to flip it somehow. I don't again. Like I say, it might go no go nowhere. But usually, you'd see the retrospective as as one of the few opportunities where you'd get to get together. 
yeah uh, planning sessions the ceremonies where you'd actually get together now i'm wondering whether those should be an opportunity to get away you know break the monotony actually the retrospective was a breath of fresh air in a sprint quite often mm -hmm. Now, what the breath of what the breath of fresh air might be to not be on a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. So, is there a way of of getting away from the team and being useful, retrospective wise? No idea what that means. So, almost, like, what do you mean in terms of a personal reflection, p p time on your own without any d distraction, as but doing that at the same time as all your other team members? Could be, could be, maybe, maybe, you know, a dedicated solo, almost meditation mm. reflection type thing with no other distractions, no, zoom off, computer off, download for half an hour mm. and then come back and, and see what, see what your colleagues have thought and what you've thought. Mm. But yeah, certainly within changing your environment and and slowing your brain down i think absolutely when you're trying to do and again it's that kind of time when i come up all with, with all my ideas is when i'm just my brain is probably at its slowest and that's it's trying to engage those kind of and i you know if you're doing a, a retrospective on zoom on a thursday or you know or a tuesday afternoon and you've just done a full day's work, you're probably not in a great, and you've done it all on Zoom. If you've been on Zoom calls all day, if you maybe, maybe you've come out of a sprint review on, on Zoom and you've had half an hour for a quick cheese sandwich at lunchtime, maybe your brain isn't, you know, isn't in the right, right kind of frame of mind to sit looking at five, six, seven other, other Zoom windows. You, maybe, maybe there's a yeah, point. But even just from a personal development point of view that's that's a healthy thing to do anyway trying to distance yourself from too much tech um at the right time is probably useful for you but even even just turning your cameras off that that would probably help trying to do as a retrospective or a stand-up or a planning session use the audio feature but don't don't use the video and you know you part of me is the battling with that thinking when you it's great to be able to see someone I, I do agree with that but your brain is working that much harder to try and maintain five six seven of the windows of of, of eye contact with other people mm. so just using the audio functionality would pro may even get people to listen that little bit harder yeah yeah i mean you, your other senses increase when you're deprived of one but um so on that point you could there's nothing to stop you for instance using a tool like Jamboard or Miro, but um, if you make it a self-explanatory process, literally write the instructions of a game, retrospective game, whatever it might be online, and people can do that at their own speed in their own time. And that's, you know, put some music on in the background or something like that, using an online jukebox or something like that, but you can literally then just fill in these post-its online and try and draw parallels without being able to talk to each other, without having to share that conversation mm -hmm. might yeah. work. I've never tried it like that, but there's nothing to say it might not work. Hmm. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see, cause there must be so many people out there trying different things right now. Hmm. Um, so many people getting frustrated with, with the monotony. And that was, like I said, the, that was one of the things that we look forward to because retrospectives broke the monotony. Um, it changed things up. It gave you a chance to stop and, re-energize mm. as well as learn um, other people must be uncovering lots of different things right now it'd be good to be good to hear what others are finding mm. um you just made me you just reminded me of our game of werewolves the other day oh yeah playing a game online you'd have okay. to um explain uh, if people weren't aware of what we did uh, what we uh, what we set up and how we went about it Oh, okay. brief, brief overview. I'll try and be brief. So um, many, many years ago, we were, we were introduced to a game called Werewolves, which since we started playing it, we found out was it, it originated as another game called Mafia. And it probably has other variants and other 
uh, sort of lineage. But um, yeah, we, we, we came to know it as the werewolves of Miller Hollow. And uh, it's a sort of game of hidden identity, really, where a bit of a party game um, where certain members of the community in the game are, have a double, a secret identity of, as werewolves who uh, try and pick off the villagers at night while the villagers are trying to rid the community of that pest. Um, and so, yeah, we decided we'd set up, normally it's a game that you'd play uh, in person, sitting in a circle. Um, we've played it at conferences. We've even played it in, in training courses before because it's got yeah. quite a lot of interesting messages, potentially learning points. Uh, but we thought for a bit of fun, we'd play it at our social distance in that we have on Fridays. And uh, we invited people to come along and, and play. And we had people from America and uh, Germany and yeah, yeah, uh, Scandinavia. Someone from Scandinavia, wasn't there? Yeah, Finland, all sorts. So um, it was uh, it was good fun. It was quite yeah, and because I've played it before on I, since lockdown, and I was amazed at how. Um, it does bond it it creates i'm not going to say it goes so far as to say friendships but it's it creates com certainly creates conversation and um a lot of fun a lot of um teasing maybe that kind of you know playful teasing through and they, these are complete strangers that had never met before on that on that day and yeah, there's 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 a lot in that I and mean, i i've played it before on a CSM course, I'm not sure if you were there, but I, I certainly, I for a couple of months, I iterated on, on a version of it in, in a CSM, mainly to finish day one, I think it was, to finish my kind of day one of that first day. Because it usually was getting on to talk about the Scrum Master role. And so I, I generally tried to include a Scrum Master in a deliberate role of someone trying to facilitate the team agreements. Yeah. So if you don't know the game, at the end of each day, effectively, the, the community has to decide on which of their community to get rid of, to lynch in metaphorical sense. On suspicion of being a werewolf. On suspicion, based on their conversations they've had, who they're suspicious of, and trying to convince and, and trying to get a team, a village decision, a community decision on which, which of their team members is, is, a, is a double agent or a, a werewolf. And it's hard to without taking over, without telling people, without, you know, listening to what everyone says and then just making your own decision. I tried to create this, this scrum master role amongst these villagers as someone who's got to listen carefully and try and create proposals and, and, and give options and then allow the village to decide. So I, I changed the game slightly to a base. I, I don't think I allowed the scrum master a vote as such, but they had to try and encourage that, that team to make a decision. Yeah. And the Scrum Master was definitely not a werewolf. Yeah, the Scrum Master was kind of... I ruled them out that they were of any suspicion. They tried to make them as neutral as possible. Okay, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it was an, it, we certainly had some interesting uh, behaviours emerge in our game last, last week. In your experience, who wins more, the villagers or the werewolves? Of the recent times, werewolves. Yeah, that's always my experience too. Um, I think it's, uh, easier to, it's easier to be sneaky in a new group than it is to be ruthless in a new group. Saying that about the new group thing, I remember playing at BT. I think I think at this time you weren't. It was probably a meeting that you weren't at, Jeff. There was there was <laughs> there, there were many of those that you didn't. I tended to avoid meetings. For the <laughs> I was, but I was it was um, work. me and Nigel and Nigel will remember this. But um, we ran a session after it was a team building day out and it was the, the morning after and a lot of the team had had hangovers that they were nursing so See, we while i was working you guys were getting drunk and... <laughs> um and me and nigel had agreement with the the team leader sean to run a version or a game of werewolves for our team and we ran it and you'd think that this this team a lot of those relationships like um like Sean and Alan and people that you'll know, Jeff, were quite close. It's fair to say they knew yeah. they'd known each other for a long time, and they were up. They weren't a new team, but these werewolves still managed to win. And one of the uh, so Sean particularly didn't pick up on one of his best friends at work had a hidden identity that he didn't recognise, and he was quite upset by it. He was, I remember him being quite shocked at his inability to 
detect when he wasn't telling the truth, a, a man that he'd known for you know, 15, 20 odd years. Mm. So I think it's dangerously maybe, even in more mature teams, that can be, people can still quite, can hide their, their true feelings or their true identities quite easily. Yeah. I suppose if you're quite fragile, it could be, uh, well, if you can deceive me about that. Well, exactly, yeah. But, so it could be team forming. It could it could destroy teams. I suppose that that kind of game, if they, because it is a game of of deception largely. Mm. So um, a lot of the I, I originally played this in lockdown with a group of uh, the, the applied improvisation network, a group of improvisers who use improv for teaching and for educating, and all sorts of things. And um, the guy who was running it, um, he was trying. He was thinking about using it. Um, as an offering for his clients as a, and he described it as something that would help him teach kind of influencing and negotiating. Mm -hmm. And I know that we've touched a lot on this before in a lot of our classes about influencing. We do talk about a scrum master being a politician and being an, an influencer in organizations. Mm -hmm. But we also talk about this fine line between influencing and manipulation when yeah. people feel that they've been deceived by you because you've got an agenda that, that isn't that they don't want you know they don't agree with or they think you're trying to push your own message so i think it's a very using that game in that sense about influencing maybe is a bit of a delicate line to tread yeah yeah or maybe it, maybe it's a good way of illuminating the line of where not to cross mm. because you need to try and bring people around to making a decision uh, if you're if you're a true villager, hmm. a pure villager, yeah, then you need to bring people along, um, get some kind of consensus, hmm. uh, and to be able to spot when somebody's manipulating you, hmm. <clears throat> and that can be quite useful as well, organisationally. Yeah, we. Yeah, I was just thinking today actually, um, the last the last thing we did together was the Birmingham meetup group. Was it? Yeah. We were talking there about um, the the politics, because somebody asked a question. To me. Yes, about a scrum master being a politician, yeah. Yeah. And, <clears throat> yeah, there's, they are. And this, this sense of if you can influence positively, that's got to be a useful thing. But at the very, at the very least know when people are manipulating you yeah you can understand how people think how decisions are made how people influence each other mm. consciously and unconsciously because we're inf we're influencing people unconsciously all the time mm. uh, and we're consciously but not realizing it i'm not talking about influencing people while you're asleep but um that uh, although saying that my wife said she had a dream but I cheated on her and she hated me after she, she, it was just a dream, but <laughs> she was angry with me with the next day. Somehow I'd managed to influence her in uh, during sleep, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So the well, Airwolf was a good game. A couple of people have asked us if we're going to do it again. We might do, we might do. Um, yeah, it was a, it went down quite well. Yeah, it was, um, it take, it probably took a little bit of time to set up. You've got to, you're going to be quite, I think what I'd do again, if I was going to do it again, I'd send out the rules or the, at least a, an overview of the rules in advance and then people can read up on it and mm. make sure they're, they're au fait with the rules and how Zoom works. And it doesn't work particularly well with mobile phones, apparently. So, or mm. certainly breakout rooms didn't. So we Limited have... functionality, isn't it? Yeah. Well, talking of that, you just stumbled on something else, actually, which is going to bring us back to our remote meeting. So I, I'm, um, I was due to run a retrospective for a client last week yes last mm -hmm. week uh, it got delayed there was a, there was a clash with with a board meeting um so it's in now next week but um there was a lot of people so first of all i wanted to make sure that it wasn't overcrowded so mm -hmm. i asked them to self-select to make sure there was enough coverage of opinions that it was still a you know a workable sized group and um I asked them to to give me some input, get, gather some data in advance. So I created a really short, timed it, made sure it would take no more than five minutes. Questionnaire. Yeah. 
uh, sort of Google form type survey monkey type thing. Yeah. Um, where they could give me some qualitative and quantitative data. And then I gathered that data together and presented it back to them, consolidated and asked them to, to have a look at that data in advance before the yeah. session. Yeah. So a lot of this stuff can be done outside of the zoom call. Uh, so that allows us to reduce the amount of time we need to actually be online together and allows us to focus on stuff, but also allows you to digest information, not just on the fly. Mm -hmm. Some people just don't, they prefer to sit with things and just think about things for a little bit when in a really short space of time in a retrospective, sometimes you don't have that. Mm -hmm. And so the people who are much better at thinking on their feet are at an advantage. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they'll, they, by the time we get to the retrospective, they'll have had a week and a half to, to, to think about the data that's in front of them for the specific okay. themed topic of the retrospective. Um, and yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that plays out. Who picks that topic? Uh, so the group themselves, they picked the topic. Uh, and I spoke to a couple of people just to get a little bit of context, mm. because I'm, I'm out of, I'm not in their day to day, so I don't really mm. know the details, but enough to, to get a feel for what, what was going on. So I could work with them and craft a goal, a specific goal for the retrospective mm. around that theme, not just, we're going to have a retrospective on this topic, but like a, a, an objective to meet. So the okay. end of it, we know we've met that objective um, and check that with them. So that that's, um, I think it's set up. Well, there is a chance. And I said this to them that uh, actually you might not even need the retrospective now there's 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 perfectly it would be perfectly fine by me if you mm. use this data as a group decided what you wanted to do and didn't need the actual session mm. uh, that would be fine by me um so there's i think making use of um all the options you have available perhaps that's maybe that's the message of what i'm trying to get across because mm. i i ran one of these um online retros for a team last week and um, I originally set out the time box when I was trying to arrange it and agree it up front at two hours. I thought, well, he wanted to, so the guy who was organizing it or asked me to come in and, and help. I gave him the option. I said, well, you can either, one or two things, you can either run this as kind of a, um, you know, what do you call it? A, an extraordinary retrospective, which is kind of would interrupt your normal process and we'll just do it as, a, as an ad hoc one-off here. Or you could just schedule it for when I come in at the end of your sprint as normal, but give people a bit of notice that you're going to have a, a neutral facilitator. And then we got onto the subject of, of topics, if you like. And I said, well, you've got a choice. Is there, you can either go back to the team and, and ask them to come up with some topics they want to talk about, or you can just see what emerges. Mm. And they, they chose that kind of the latter there, just to see what emerged. And some fairly interesting stuff did emerge when you just went into it with a kind of a, you know, I had some games I was going to always going to play, but the conversations lent themselves to where he thought they would go, if you know what I mean. And he, he yeah. kind of was pleased that that's where they did, they did go. So, um, yeah, it was, it was, I mean, I was really surprised that my point was is how fast two hours went. And I don't know if it's because it was online and I don't know if it was because um, the tool that I was using, the Miro board or whatever it was, but it just felt, it didn't feel long enough. Even, even though, you know, the advice, the guidance is for a two week sprint, two hours should be, but I, I felt that there was more, there was more that you could have got out of it. And you know, obviously with remote stuff, and again, back to the original question, you've got to be careful with people's energy levels and you've got to manage that much more effectively. And you've got to be perhaps a lot more aware of that on an online meeting, but I felt that maybe it took even a bit longer to get deep enough in a retro online than it would have done if you were face to face. Mm. Just when you, because when you did scratch away the surface, there were some more underlying team behaviors that needed to be exposed. I felt. Is that something that could be picked up next time or would the moment have gone? No, I think it was, I think it opened a, uh, an option for that team that it was okay to to deal with those kind of things on re in retros but perhaps they hadn't dealt with them too much before so if anything it just maybe would start that conversation a little bit easier next time okay and so, that might be enough. yeah 
There's always yeah, a absolutely. desire for more, isn't there? Yeah, you want to get yeah. as much as you can, but sometimes that's enough. And I've got to be mindful of if, if it's—is it just me being nosy? So, as, as a as a facilitator, is this isn't my problem? This isn't my yeah. team? This isn't but also my... also wanting the best for them as well. You know, yeah, wanting yeah. Wanting them to get as much, make as much progress as they possibly can. But again, it's about but looping back to that influencing. Is it? Am I influencing people with with my line of questioning, with my mm. through my own curiosity as a as a Leading facilitator? Yes. Yeah. Though I was mindful of that in a couple of cases, I I retracted my question and and um, and stepped back. So, but yeah, how do people get hold of you if they if they want you for their retrospectives? What's the best way to to get? Well, them? Jeff. Well, you can look on my website. <laughs> no. Agile Fly. Agilefly.co.uk, yeah. Um, people are actually going to type that in now, you watch. Uh, but um, <laughs> I should buy that URL, shouldn't should I? should buy that domain, yeah. <laughs> um, no, so if you look on... Yeah, Nigel already has. And <laughs> pictures if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, no, all the, it's very simple. You just literally look on the diary on my website, agilefly.co.uk. And if you are interested, you can have a look at any potential dates that might work for you or... And we can book a time for me to run retros. But yeah, it's it's actually been, you know, a lot of these, this lockdown stuff has got me thinking a lot of different ways. And I've already got an, a list of other ideas that I'm going to try out. And some are going to work, some aren't. A lot of them, these are, these are experiments, but it's a good time to experiment, isn't it? So Definitely. Yeah, so it's, it's good fun. Well, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I wonder what other games there are that we used to play that we could uh, trial online. I know people have made a good uh, online conversion of the ballpoint game and the penny game. Yeah. Um, things like the pizza, Kanban pizza game and things like that, they're all online already. I can't think what there are now. But, uh, yeah, um, sprint reviews on Zoom? Not done any of those as yet. But... Um... So I'd like to think they were, uh, they were a lot easier. Um, than the others because there's a larger audience but most of the audience are on view only right so mm. whereas we would used to we, we'd often say um, you know there's a rule that only certain people can speak in a sprint review which which is all well and good us saying it but when you're in a room and there's a senior manager there yeah it's very hard to say Shh. Uh, but here you can actually if you're in control of the meeting, you can have their microphone muted. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, and uh, you can make certain people co-host so they can do their bit now and again. And you can have the chat facilitated, so you can you can yeah. team up with a with a with a tool like Slido or something and have the questions come in and have them upvoted and things by the people who are interested and so on. Um, so I think yeah, there's there's definite benefits, and, and a lot of people. Um, well, this is kind of a almost like a marmite point in a way in that it divides people but I've, I've known a lot of people who, who record their sprint reviews mm. um, even before lockdown they, they, if they were in person they would still record them uh, for posterity but also for you know, kind of their journey if you like and, and, and where they've come from and this is a lot easier to do but one of the other benefits they get from recording it is that not everybody would be able to make it in person and you would want everybody there in person it would be too big. It would be too crowded, and so you could make that recording available, perhaps an edited version, yeah. if you want to, uh, to other people who are interested but you know, haven't really got that much involvement. Uh, and you've got that built into the tools now. Yeah, yeah. One well, thing I'm with regards to tools. You're sounding very optimistic here. That's... <laughs> no, just to finish on a downer. Then um, <laughs> no, the. Um... So in in a, a call in a retro that I I worked on last week for the first time I used Teams. Have you used Teams yet? Uh, I've been invited into Teams, yes. But I've from what they this team told me about Teams is it's a lot harder to use breakout break rooms. rooms. Yeah. So they are there, I think, but it's a lot of much more manual process in which to set them up, and that's the probably the the feature I use most in and even in. In planning sessions, these are going to be useful. In retro, certainly these are going to be useful. But breakout rooms in Zoom, I think, are probably the the most frequently used. And we we use the breakout rooms in the Werewolves game as well, which you wouldn't normally do. How did you? So you, because Jeff, you were a villager. 
Jeff was part of the game. You were at one point you were voted as the the town mayor, and you weren't very happy about that <laughs> at the time. So if if you haven't played the game, in our version last week, the town mayor is elected by the the uh, the, the community. So it's an extra extra kind of identity someone in the community is given. So the so the mayor could be a villager or could be a werewolf. And Jeff, for some reason, the village seemed to think that Jeff would be a good mayor, but he didn't want to take the title, did you? Well, <laughs> no, because I, I I don't really rate my ability at um, picking out liars. <laughs> um, uh, but so from playing the game before, and this is. To a degree where my prior knowledge actually proved costly, um, because our experience sometimes you, know, you 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 come to expect what you've always expected. Uh, so in the past, when I played this, generally speaking, the werewolves have clocked on pretty quickly that being if you're a werewolf and the mayor, that's a big advantage. Yes, because the mayor gets the deciding vote if there's a tie. Um, and so my my warning <laughs> for the rest of the game players so after about 10 seconds I said I would be wary of somebody who's very very keen to be the mayor yeah. so people were putting themselves forward and almost before Pit Paul had said does anybody want to be mayor we had two people that said yeah yeah yeah, yeah. me 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 <laughs> and to me that just started flashing alarm bells but as it turned out, neither of those two people were werewolves. Weren't they? Oh, okay. Um, and so they immediately raised suspicion. Yeah. Uh, and because I'd said, I, you know, um, because I'd said, beware of people who, uh, who, who yeah. want to be there, uh, that sort of, I think, gave people some trust for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't a werewolf. I lost. Mm. But again, that's down to status, isn't it? You effectively then lowered your status by admitting you didn't know, or you were trying to. You certainly weren't taking a high status position around that, and that's that probably what helped you out in that case. Quite possibly, but, yeah. Yeah, but it's an interesting game of status as well, werewolves. Anyway, but yeah, we digress. Good game. Yeah. So um, yeah, we'll um, we'll talk. We've been talking for. Well, so we're back at the social distancing, now. just the normal social distancing this Friday? Yeah, I think we'll just go back to just um, maybe regular drinks, just to no give quizzes. ourselves a week off. Huh? No quizzes? Well, it's your turn to do a quiz this time. I did the last one. Mm. Um, but what we might look at, and we'll, we'll kind of sow this little seed on this um, podcast now, if you are listening, and perhaps give us some feedback on this, or give, give us your thoughts on this on uh, social media, but... Jeff and I have, have running the idea of maybe an informal open space. So in our regular Friday evening slot, um, we would run, basically just facilitate for you. Uh, uh, Jeff and I would run a, a, a very informal open space with breakout rooms in Zoom. So it's quite easy to do. All we'd need really is an idea of if anyone's interested to attend. Um, and maybe to suggest some content or some questions that they'd like uh, as the subject of those those open space sessions. So we're, we're just running that idea through um, through our minds at the moment. We'll put something more formal out there if we do give it the green light, but um, keep your eye open for that. And if you've got any su suggestions, we'll start to form kind of an online marketplace that you'll be able to submit any uh, topics that you'd like to discuss in that open space. Yeah, again, maybe that's something that we can take advantage of time and uh, have the marketplace ready by the time we get That there. was what it's I was pure, planning, yeah. isn't pure open space, um, but again, it could be a more efficient use of time. Yeah, so just have that constantly running in the background and it can be built in in advance of the session itself to make the most of it. But it'll be very informal. There'll, there'll be uh, beers involved, I imagine. So, Drink of your choice. Yeah. All right, All sir, right. we're done. Yes, so, um, that was good. Cheers. Until next time. Cheers. Stay safe, stay alert. <laughs> yeah, that's the message.